Welcome to day three of 31 and 31. I'm John from Just Another Horror Podcast. You can find us on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. This is a show where I, by myself, watch 31 movies over the course of 31 days. Yesterday, we watched It Comes at Night. So today, I figured I'd find out what it, what else it does. And I guess it waits. A movie from 2005 starring Serena Vincent. Who the fuck is that, you say? Well, she was in Cabin Fever... And she also played some woman, I think her name was Ariola. I'm not even joking, from not another teen movie. She spent the whole movie just walking around nude. That's all she did. That, friends, is the range that this woman has. I can't, I can't stress to you enough how bad of an actress she is. At least in this movie. I actually thought she was pretty good in Cabin Fever. In this movie? Wow. Man. So she's a forest ranger. Yeah, right. She is up in a one of those towers that they have in the forest. Just drinking vodka and having flashbacks for 20 fucking minutes. Her guy friend shows up. Who's also a park ranger. He says that he wants to make a life with her. But all he's trying to do is take advantage of the fact that she's fucking depressed because she murdered her friend accidentally by driving drunk and crashing a van or jeep or something. And her friend is now dead and she never told the cops and she's feeling guilt. And all this guy's feeling is a fucking erection that he wants to put inside of this woman. And he does. Congratulations. You win. I almost forgot that there's an actual introduction to this movie. A bunch of people blow open a cave and lo and behold, there's a demon monster in there. That's all it needed to get out and start fucking eating people. So, the monster is chasing people around after 25 minutes of listening to this woman and this guy contemplate whether or not they'll fuck. They have one of the worst sex scenes I've ever seen in a movie. Two people who obviously do not want to be on camera naked together. Just, it's bad. The next morning, it's some like something straight out of fucking Birdemic. We go from sex scene to monster is finally in the fucking movie. He has climbed up to the top of the tower and is setting off the alarm for some reason? Why he would want to bring attention to himself, I don't know. Then he goes down to the bottom of this tower and flips the jeep over. Which, by the way, later, he comes back, puts the jeep back... And takes the fucking engine out. Like they were going to be able to move the fucking thing when it was upside down. On like down the side of a hill. But he's like no they might be able to pull it out. And then drive away so I better fucking take the engine out. God damn it. The two park rangers run into two hikers that were missing. They're two old people. <coughs> they tell the two old people that they're going to help them get out. The old people are very insistent, even though they've been lost for days, that all they need is pointed in the basic direction. So what does the monster do? He kills the old people, but he doesn't stop there, no. He drags the fucking bodies to this tower, drags them up the fucking tower, and hangs them from the fucking ceiling. Just one, because the other one is on the roof, and when the two of them are looking inside at the dead body hanging from the ceiling, the body on the roof gets pushed off on top of them. They then stand there for like 10 minutes talking about what they're going to do. Didn't something just fucking push a body on you from up there? Did you happen to like go, hey, is there something up there? Hello? No. No, they just fucking stood there. Because the body apparently rolled itself off of the fucking roof. So this is the point where the boyfriend guy, I guess he's the boyfriend, leaves her there after there's been two dead bodies. Oh, by the way, they bury them too because she's apparently religious now. She goes on and on about fate and shit like that all through this fucking movie and it never leads to a goddamn thing. Not a thing. Oh, it does lead to one thing that also doesn't lead to anything. But we'll get there in a second. 
he wanders off into the woods by himself, knowing full well something is out there murdering people. And guess what? He gets murdered. That's when she finds his head in the garage and goes, No, damn it. Ah, shit. So she wanders around after emptying a whole bunch of cans of beans on the floor so she could make can alarms. This scene takes four fucking minutes to get done. Four minutes of her twisting off can lids and dumping the beans on the fucking floor before finally she gets chased around a little bit by this monster then goes looking for the monster she follows the monster to the cave when she goes into the cave there is a hippie hanging out in the fucking cave just hanging out in the monster's cave then leads her to his RV she keeps asking what what's killing people what's ripping the heads off of people What's dragging people up the fucking stairs of a fire tower and hanging them from roofs? And he goes, a monster. And she goes, bullshit. <laughs> and then he brings up that this monster has empathy and still feels and wants to care for people. And maybe they should be nice to it. It never, at any point after he says that, shows any signs of anything resembling anything that he just fucking told her at all nothing by the way this monster looks like the fucking genie from wishmaster which by the way we're gonna get there and it's not gonna be fun it might be funner than this fucking movie though so in order to get rid of this thing she drives it she like pushes it into the cave from the beginning of the movie with her car, lights some dynamite, and then runs away and it blows up. And you're like, oh good, this fucking movie is over. But it's not. It's not. The monster's gone. Okay? Now remember, it took 20 minutes to get to the monster. There's still five minutes of this fucking movie left. And we're done with the monster. Because now, she has to walk around the woods with a fucking gun. Then go to the... Oh, she turns her badge in because apparently that's important that she was part of the Forestry Commission. Also, she fixed the fucking dam problem from the beginning of the movie that they mentioned because that's fucking important. Then she calmly goes and tells the police that there are five people dead on the mountain. And the policeman's like, Oh, is the spree killer back? You don't know who did this? It's probably the spree killer, right? Yeah, it's okay, that's fine. So she then admits to the cop that she was driving the Jeep from the beginning of the flashbacks when she her friend died, and then she's still not done because then she goes home and reads a fucking book, and then a parrot shows up from that's been all through the movie, and oh my god, I just well, I can't fucking... Oh. <laughs> Fuck this movie. 2005 straight to DVD release. What the fuck did I think I was going to get with this? I remember seeing this on the shelf of my video store and being like, maybe I should check this out someday. 15 years later, I did. I wish that I never had. Do I recommend this movie? Dear fuck no. Fuck no. This director directed the I Spit on Your Grave remake. And the sequel, the completely necessary sequel to a Rape Revenge remake movie, I Spit on Your Grave too, and this. Congratulations. Now, I never made a movie, so you got me there. We'll see you tomorrow.